Shannon Malchick Myers coming to you live from San Diego. Today we will be talking about how to picture quantitative data sets. So here are some of the most common graphs that are used. We're not going to talk about every single possible way to plot quantitative data known to mankind or person kind, but we will look at some of the main players. So first off we have dot and stem and leaf plots. Dot plots and stem and leaf plots are nice in the sense that none of the data is lost. So what you do is we only are dealing with at this point graphs of quantitative data with just one variable. With this particular plot, the variable is a discrete numerical variable, the number of children in each family that was surveyed. And with what you do with uh, dot plots is you literally put a dot in each of these discrete columns where it applies. So the number of families that have one child were three of the surveyed. Number of families that had two children were, let's see, three, four, five, six, eight or so, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So how many of these families had three children? Awesome. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so on. So here we know how many families were surveyed or folks were surveyed, and we also have each specific data value. A stem and leaf plot is similar to that. I know this one looks a little wild, but it's fine. It's actually kind of an odd stem and leaf plot, and with big data sets, sometimes, you know, we won't, people take shortcuts, but the stem is, is over on the left side, and you want to put some sort of a legend as far as what, what does this mean? So here, do you see the author said the decimal point is one digit or digits. This is you know, obviously automatically generated um, to the left of the divider. So we've got 16 here, meaning 1.6, and then you go to the hundredths. So on this, so, and then these are denoting which data input you're on. So this, one, this line, this row starts with data input one, this row here, the second one, starts with data input 14, and so on, all right? Now, next up, we have the actual data. So let's look at how this translates. Do you see how we have 1.600? And here, this is 1.60. So like I said, they're going to the nearest hundredth on this plot. And um, that's our first data value. And if there's a repeated data value, you repeat the number. The next one, 1 1.67, is when it, how it's rounded to the nearest hundredth. And here, do you see a seven? This is where it gets a little weird. The next data value is 1.7. And by the way, these have been ordered. You want to order, get your data from, you know, least to most or most to least uh, when you're doing these plots. Not necessarily the dot plot, but the stem and leaf plot, it's nice to have it in order right off the bat. So here, do you see that there's a, there, it, there's a gap, they're counting, they're, they're skipping instead of going by one-tenth, right? They're going by two-tenths. So when you see this next zero, it means 1.70 because Remember that the stem and leaf are ordered, and so if it was meant to be 1.60, the zero that my pointer is on right there, or under right there, would have been over here where the 7 is, okay? So this is meant to be 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1.70, 1
then 1.73, 1.75, and that one repeats. So let's check it out. 1.70, there we have it. 1.73, 1.75, and then see how it repeated? So these are, again, really great ways to order your data. And if you take a look at this one here, the kind of distributions of these graphs, do you see that the dot plot, you know, the, the if you think about where's the center of the data, do you see that it's kind of in the middle here a little bit? Maybe, maybe it's got more data towards the left than it does towards the right, that's for sure. But most of the families fall kind of in this middle value of three children. But over here, we would call this bimodal because there's a lot of values that are here and then a lot of values that are here. All right, histograms. So for histograms, uh, the bars actually touch. If they don't touch, you have something that's called a bar chart and that's used for qualitative data. So here, somebody metal the uh, sorry, somebody measured the petal length of these flowers and recorded the data. But see, there's partial values. So it looks here like they started at a half and ended at seven, right? Or just barely after a half or just before seven. So we don't have the original data but we can certainly estimate. So right here, this bar goes from a half to 0.99, and you want to be careful that you are going to at least the next digit so that we don't get a value that would be applicable to two different of, two different of these columns here, these bars. All right, so for example, if you had one and we didn't go to 0.99, then you wouldn't know if you should put the one with this data or with this data. So that is why I went to 0.99. And the frequency, the number of data values that fall in there is four, about four I'm estimating here. So what do you think about the next column? How many data values about do you think fell in that class? Awesome. About 24 is what I saw. And very good. 19 in the next column. And then it drops, doesn't it? So again, this data looks to be a bit bimodal, doesn't it? And as we continue, that last, that last class had three. From two and a half to 2.99, we've got one data value. From three to 3.49, we've got two. What about the next one? Very good, got about eight values there. Awesome, 23, 17, and then from five to 5.49, cool, we got 20. The next column, 18, and from 6 to 6.49, 7 data values fell in that area or that um, bar. And from 6.5 to 7, we had 4 data values. Right. Normally, we would go the other way. We would have the raw data and we would um, decide on our classes and Deciding on your classes is really important. That's how a lot of folks make misleading graphs, either on purpose or because their classes are either too wide. Usually it would be too wide um, and uh, it, it would make it, it would kind of skew the perspective of the person that is looking at the histogram and trying to interpret it but not you because you will be statistically savvy. All right, so time series plots are another kind of plot you'll see a lot. 
even rhymes, right? And here, we, with time plots, what we have is you literally, with each data value, you literally plot like a, an ordered pair type of thing. And then you do something that in algebra they always told you not to do unless you had a line. You connect the dots, right? So um, here, this is McDonald's and this graph isn't super clear to me and I didn't do it on purpose, but then I thought I'll keep this graph and we can talk about it because I'm not quite sure what these values are meant to be, all right? There's no uh, description on the vertical axis. And if you look here, yeah, I could guess that this is a uh, year and that each of these tick marks would be probably represent quarters, but it's not specifically stated. And look at this, it doesn't start at zero doesn't start at zero so there might end up you know there might it might look less different if we started at zero so I am not crazy about this graph but this is kind of what time series plots look like <laughs> and um, it, it's a good model of things that were forgotten so that we don't forget them when we're making our time series plots. Okay. So have a fabulous morning or afternoon or evening whenever you're watching this video. Thank you for listening and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.